morning. Welcome to worship. We're glad that you came today. We have an exciting time today to hear about the work that was done in Haiti. Uh, we're very glad that our mission teams went and they had a good time there, did a lot of good work, and they returned safely. And today they can uh, tell us about it, so we're glad for that. Thank you for joining us today. You might have heard that uh, Janelda Neuendorp died on Thursday evening. Uh, the uh, visitation for her is going to be uh, this afternoon at Vanderplug Funeral Home from 2 to 4, and the funeral will be here tomorrow at 11 o'clock. We also extend our sympathy to uh, Nancy Martins and her family in the death of her brother, uh, Robert Norton, in California. Uh, next Sunday, we're going to do something a little different. In the Sunday school time, uh, rather than have our adult classes, we're going to have a, uh, a large group session in the Fellowship Hall. Uh, we are uh, having a session called Learning from History, where we're going to look back over the history of the church and uh, note some significant highlights that uh, have been part of the church. And hopefully, uh, by looking back, we can uh, help us to uh, look forward better. So we're going to do that next Sunday. Uh, we'll not have the usual adult classes. If you don't usually go to Sunday school, you're certainly welcome to uh, come to this uh, next uh, Sunday uh, between the two services. Our youth group has an announcement. Uh, most of you probably already know, but this is just a reminder about the RCOF Bazaar that is on March 19 at 7 o'clock here at the church. And um, it's to raise funds for our Rocky Mount High at the end of this coming summer because we have a lot of funds to raise, so come out and support on March 19th. The Bazaar, we're going to have um, an ice cream sundae thing, my bobber, and we're going to have a fish pond for children, which is not actual fish, and that really disappointed me. <laughs> and we're also going to have a small auction and a large auction. Um, for the small and large auction, we are asking if anyone has donations for that. Um, a small auction item would be like $25 or less um, value, and a big auction would be anything more than that. Um, we're also asking if anyone has a monetary donation for our funds to Rocky Mountain High, and just to keep us in your prayers as we fundraise and head off to Colorado this summer. So I need to remind you that uh, after our service today, we have the uh, uh, spud dinner uh, put on by the Alpha team. So we hope that you can join for that, and uh, you're invited to uh, stay for that, uh, and your donations will be much appreciated. I, this morning, I was given a cap from Marv. I wonder if this qualifies as a big item or a small item for the auction. <laughs> Uh, Marv, I guess, paid good money for this, so it's probably uh, considered a big item. In Wisconsin, it would not be an item, but uh, he, uh, he gave this to me. He said he found it on the way to Haiti, so um, that's my present for this morning. Uh, let's now stand and greet each other. Remain standing for our songs. I will exalt you, my God the King, and I will praise your name forever and ever. For great is the Lord, and he is most worthy of all our praise. Your glorious cause, O oh God, in 
as we sing the words our Savior taught us to pray. With your hand in the 
name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus we pray. Father, we pray, I will sing, sing a new song, I will sing, sing a new song, I will sing, sing a new song to the Lord. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Every heart proclaim, mercy of your name. On earth as it is in heaven, for the kingdom is yours and the power is yours and the glory forever. Amen. For the kingdom is yours and the power is yours and the glory forever. Amen. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, every heart proclaim the mercy of your name. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Every heart proclaims the mercy of your name on earth as it is in having children's church today? No, no children's church today so they can uh, see the pictures too today. Let's be joined together in prayer. Let's pray. Lord, we come before you and our prayer is that your kingdom would come and your will would be done here on earth as it is in heaven. We know that you have a perfect plan for our lives, that your will is good, and you desire good things for us. Help us to respond to you, to respond to your great love. Help us to each realize that you care for us and you love us more than we understand or comprehend. We thank you for the privilege to be your children. We know that we are received out of your grace. You claim us into your family. We thank you for each person here today. We thank you for the ways you have guided and blessed each one. We thank you for your protection and for your care through another week. We thank you that we can gather here today. Thank you for the privilege to be part of your work in this place, in this community, but in other places as well. We are grateful today for those who have been able to be a part of the work in Haiti. We thank you for their commitment and their desire to do this. We thank you for the work that has been accomplished, and for the lives that have been touched, and for the homes that have been supplied for people there. Lord, we continue to pray for your church, not only here, but in our country and around the world. We pray for the church in Haiti, that you will continue to bless Christians there, that you will use them and guide them. We pray for those that have new homes because of the team that went. We pray for the families that have been impacted there. And Lord, we ask that you would help us also to sow seeds of kindness and of love and compassion in the areas of life that we live. We pray for your blessing upon each family and member of the church. We pray for those who mourn, for Nancy Martins and her family, and for Judy and Jane Neuendorp and the rest of their family. Lord, we pray that you will be with your people, that you will give your comfort and peace. You'll help us to claim your promises and to live in light 
of the assurance of your word. Lord, lead us further, we pray, in this day and through the days of this week. We pray for our search team, for all who are uh, working at that. We pray for wisdom and guidance. We pray for uh, the consistory, uh, for your blessing and leading in all of our activities and responsibilities. We ask, Father, that you would pour out your Spirit upon us, Make us wise in the use of gifts and time and abilities that you give to us. We pray that your kingdom would truly come and your will would be done here on earth as it is in heaven. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to have the Haiti people present at this time. Okay, actually, uh, our church had two mission teams that went to Haiti this past year. Uh, the first one was in October, and that was primarily a dental team, but we did have a small construction team that went along. And you can see the people from our church that went on that team was Jamie Elgersma, Jeff Freeman, Greg Sawyer, Paula Sawyer, and Dave Serrano. And they helped put a couple of roofs on some schools. One school was burnt down, so they replaced that roof and did some other miscellaneous things around the camp. And one of the biggest things they did for us, the team that went in January, they went down to the bin site where it was going to be uh, located, and they made sure that, you know, they, they picked out the site, and they made sure all the bin supplies were there, and then uh, they, they told the Haitians how they kind of had to level the site to get it ready for us. So they were very invaluable to us, too, so we're very glad that this team went down in October. And I got a few pictures of what they kind of did in October. First of all, a picture of the guys on the team. And this was what the bin site looked like before we got there in January. And you can see there was a lot of trees and brush around here. And I think Dave said there was about 20 trees that had to be cut down and, and to get ready for the bin site. And when you see the later pictures, you'll see that it really changed a lot. So uh, we're very glad that they went there and kind of told the Haitians what had to happen before we got there. They checked to make sure all the bin supplies were there. And this is one of the roofs that they replaced. It was on a school that had burned down, and they replaced the roof and then put rubber on it. Okay, then the team that went in January was uh, Dave Serrano, my wife, and uh, De Dennis and Deb Tenclay, Shane Jager, Mark Tenclay, Marwin Vogel, Michael Jager, Marvin Reeson, then Ed and Shirley Jager met up with us in, in Miami. Most of you have probably seen a picture of what Haiti looks like before. Normally, we work right in here. This is Port-au-Prince, the main city. That's where the, the Mission to Haiti compound is at. But this time, the bins were put up over here on a little town called Tiguave. It's probably about 40 miles away, but it takes two and a half to three hours to get there. And that kind of gives you an idea of what the roads are like in, in Haiti. Uh, it, it's crazy. You'll all of a sudden have two or three vehicles coming right at you. There's no middle line. It's just wild, and there's, there's holes all over the place. And, so it was kind of a long trip, but uh, yeah. The bins were actually put up right down in here. This is a picture of the compound where we, where we normally stay uh, when we go down to Mission to Haiti. This is just a couple of pictures of uh, traveling on, on the way down to the, to the village. Again, Haiti is a very, very poor country. You can see garbage all over and just, it's, it's quite a deal. Okay, this is the home where we stayed at when we got to the village, and this is actually the pastor's home. It was a pretty decent uh, two-story block building. They had uh, put some tarps up for us out here. This is where we ate. We had white, we took these white lawn chairs along. We kind of put them in a circle, and uh, they, they gave us some nice protection so when we ate out there. Another picture of us after we had eaten. And then a picture of inside the, the, the home. This one was the king suite. Well, we kind of first decided who was going to get to sleep in this nice king suite. Well, we thought Ed can surely better have that since they're the oldest one. So we gave them the nice king bed. But uh, they didn't have a lot of privacy because right at the foot of their bed, Dave Serrano and Shane Jager slept. So <laughs> they, they didn't have a lot of privacy. 
this is another bedroom. I know the picture's a little bit dark, but uh, there were four cots in here, and this is where Deb and I slept, and then another couple. And I should mention, too, that our team went, and then my son David took uh, 10 people from this church in Chicago along, too, so we had a group of about 20 people. We kind of like to tell the story. This bed right here, when we got there on Monday, we were unloading our supplies, and uh, my son had a bag of candy canes along that he was going to hand out to all the Haitian people. That uh, was fine. Uh, so we went down to work on the bin site that afternoon. We came back. That bed was just crawling with thousands of ants. We thought, oh, no. And that was going to be the bed my wife was going to sleep in. So she took the sheets out and, and, and shook them out as the best she can. She said, Dennis, this is now your bed. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we survived that okay. We, my wife started spraying off all over the place and whatever, but yeah, we got through that okay. This was the, the man cave. This is where the eight of the guys slept. Now you can see it was pretty tight quarters. They just laid on air mattresses on the floor, and they just one right next to another. This was kind of a picture of the, of the small little kitchen they had in the home there. Um, you know the little story we talked about one night we were having dessert, and they had all the cake. They, they made some nice cake. We thought, this is really great. They had all the cake dished up on nice little platters for us, and well, by the time we get to the cake, the same ants that were in the bedroom were now on the cake. So we had kind of had to brush the ants off the cake, and uh, it was still good. So Marv said the ants are good for pro protein. So Another interesting story, when we got there, this, the Haitians were going to cook for us. This was one of the things that concerned us on this trip, because normally we, we uh, eat on the compound and have American food. This time we were going to have Haitian food the whole time we were there. And the Haitians said they'd cook for us. But when we got there, they were putting up this little barrier so we couldn't see what they were cooking or how they were cooking. That made us even more nervous. But so Deb went around and, whoops. She went around and took a picture from the top. This is how they were cooking for us, just in open pots, open flame. Uh, you can see right here, that's, that's what they were cooking for us, kind of beans and rice. And it was very good. When we got there, there was chickens and turkeys all over the place. Deb was kind of trying to chase a, a chicken out of the kitchen, and Dave took this picture of this turkey. We thought, well, that could be a good meal for us, you know, one of the days, but we, we never did eat the turkey. This is what you call a Haitian dishwasher. When uh, we ate in our circle, and we had this, this big uh, pot here, and we put all our dishes in there, then the ducks would come, and they'd, they'd pick off the little food morsels that were left or whatever, but... We were thankful they did wash the dishes after that. Okay, this was the view from, from where we slept. The house was actually up on, on kind of a hill. The, where the bins went, were down over here, this is the school, and the bins went over here, and that was quite a steep hill to climb up there, but it was a beautiful view. And if you can see, there was kind of a lake in the background here and nice trees all around. It really was, was, was a very nice, nice area from where, where we slept. Another picture of us kind of hanging out after we ate a meal. And this is what the food looked like. It was a lot of beans and rice. And uh, this, is, of course, is the rice and the beans mixture together. And then they had a little sauce they poured over top of it. And uh, it was very good. We were kind of concerned with this trip since it was all Haitian food. We wanted to make sure we didn't get sick. And very thankful the Lord took care of us. Nobody got sick while we were there. So. And just a couple more pictures of the guys, Mark and Shane and Michael. And, and uh, Shane found a little gal there that was up there by where we were sleeping. And then, of course, the laundry. They did laundry for us. Of course, it's all by hand. They did it in these tubs here like this, and then they just hang it out on the line. Okay, starting to work on the bins. We had to move all the supplies from the school building. They had, they had all the supplies there in, in a locked building, and thankfully they were all there for us. We had to load up all the panels and everything on, onto this truck and haul it down to where the bins were going to be built. Picture Shane hauling the, uh, some of the supplies out of, that, out of that school. This was the site now where the bins were going to go. You can see it looks a lot different than that earlier picture. The Haitians did a great job of leveling it all out, and they put a kind of a nice white rock base on there, so it worked really well. picture of Marwin and then my son David and a couple of the guys from his church kind of doing some fine tuning for the bin. A 
Okay, the first walls are going up. Dave Serrano's pretty excited here. That's what it looked like, the, the wall panels. Marv and I were kind of working on the first panel here. My son David was in the back reading the instructions to make sure we were doing it right. Picture Shane and uh, Mark working on one of the first walls. Okay, here you can see we got the, the first walls up in the bin, then we're putting this, this ventilation uh, ring around the outside of the bin. The bins are all professionally engineered, and uh, the reason for that is, you know, in Haiti it's very hot. Well, they, they need to make sure that they, they stay cool in the bin. And a lot of farmers around here always ask me, Dennis, isn't it terribly hot in those bins? Well, the answer is no. They have them engineered with airflow and whatever so that they're actually about 15 degrees cooler in the bin than they actually are on the outside. So it actually does work quite nice. Here we are putting the first roof piece on. Of course, in Haiti, it's all kind of manual hand labor. There's no lifts there or whatever to help you with that, so we had to lift it all up by hand. Another picture of the roof kind of getting completed. This picture of Marwin putting one of the first doors in. Nice, good solid wood or metal frame door. On the, on the left there, another picture of Mark and Shane kind of working on a wall. And on the right here, it's a picture of me uh, tightening up some of the bolts. The other thing we like to tell the story of, the, we had several Haitians helping us during that week. And Haitians love to get their hands on power tools. And, uh, you know, and with putting up a bin, there was a lot of nuts that had to be tightened. You got those Haitians on those power tools, they didn't want to give them up. They had just had a great time tightening all those, all those nuts. But you can see I was kind of having fun doing it too, so... Okay, uh, the, one of the hardest jobs, one of the hardest work was to pour the cement inside the bins. And here, uh, Michael Jager is getting a wheelbarrow full of cement. We had to mix all the cement in this, in this uh, cement mixer. Uh, where we were at, there's no ready mix trucks, there's no you know, poured concrete, it all had to be kind of done by hand. And that was one of the reasons we were really glad we had some young guys along. Michael and Shane and, and uh, Mark and Dave just did a great job doing all this, this heavy work. That way us older, older guys didn't have to quite do so much of that. And we really appreciated that. Here Michael just uh, put some cement in the bin. Marwin's in there. Marwin kind of headed up the cement crew. He did a great job with that. You know, most of you guys around here realize when you, when you put up a bin, you always pour the cement ahead of time. Well, you have forms on both sides, and you can easily screed it off. Well, with these bins, we had to pour the cement after the bin was up. And they do that for a couple reasons. One is to kind of seal the bin in better. Another one to kind of keep the rodents out and those kind of things. So Marwin had to kind of devise a way to kind of screep the cement off inside the bin. Came up with an idea to kind of have a center post. And then he had a two by four with a little portable vibrator on it. Then he marked the inside of the bin. And they'd kind of hold that, that board around there as they went around. Really worked well. So uh, Marwin did a great job with that. There you can see a finished floor. Looks very, looks very nice. Another picture of, you can see one of the bins is up over here, and then uh, this one we're kind of working on the second one. We kind of did it in steps. That way we could kind of keep everybody busy. We got one bin up, and then the cement guys could kind of start ready to, to pour the cement in that bin while the rest of us were putting up the next bins. And of course, when you're in Haiti, there's always kids everywhere. And so one of the things we did, we handed out trinkets while at the work site. Lots of kids around. Look at this little, little uh, guy right here. No clothes, no shoes. Uh, you see that more often in Haiti. I mean, very, very poor. And so when they see uh, you know, white Americans come around, they're all anxious to, to get whatever we can hand out to them. Another picture of putting up one of the other bins. Here we got Edgar over here. Kind of Edgar said he was kind of the supervisor, but Edgar did a really good job. He, he kind of put up grain bins himself, so it was really nice and handy to have him along. Okay, and then the, the other thing, each bin has a loft system in it. Here we are putting the, the structure up for the loft, and that's really kind of a neat, neat uh, asset to the bin because it gives extra storage area. 
And I wouldn't be surprised if some Haitians might even up, end up sleeping up there, but it kind of gives some extra space to each bend. Picture Marv and Edgar working on the loft system. <laughs> My son David, who, when, when all the roof was up, and that's the sun coming through the top. Okay, and one of the, the facets of the bend, they have a double roof system, and again, that's part of the engineering part where the, the air flows between the two, the two roofs. And here we got uh, Dave Serrano up here on top of the bend putting that, the, the heat shields on the top. And again, we were glad we had the young guys to crawl on the top, so us older guys could stay in the bottom. That was a little bit dangerous up there. It was pretty slippery. There you can kind of see the, all the bends there. Now there's one, two, three, four, and here's the last one going up. The only casualty of the week was Shane's pants. <laughs> we like to talk, you know, when we, one of the concerns of the group was when we went, you know, the, 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 that's sharp metal. You know, the bends are all made of metal, the sharp, their edges. We were concerned about cuts and gashes, whatever, and, you know, if you get cut down in Haiti, that's, that's not a good thing. But, you know, the Lord really protected us. Uh, we didn't have any nicks, cuts, or anything, and we were very, very thankful of that, so Shane's ripped pants wasn't too bad. And we had a dedication service for the bins when we were done. Uh, my son David read some scripture, and had, we had some prayer with the Haitian people there. And this is the pastor of the church, and he was the one who determined what families were going to get the bins. It was pretty exciting to see all the, the crowd around us. And again, the Haitian pastor there, he was speaking to the people. This was kind of the fun part. We gave them the keys to the bins, so they actually had the keys for their new homes. And then these are some of the families that got the bins. A lot of them seem to be single mothers with a fair number of children. One of the mothers, when they got inside the bin, she almost hugged it. She was not about to let go of it. She, she had a home, maybe for one of the first times. Again, a mother with... with uh, about five children there, four children. This is a picture of my wife and I and our little sponsored gal, Esther. It's kind of a neat story. We've sponsored her probably for six or seven years, and we haven't seen her for about three years probably, but uh, Deb was in the school sorting school supplies and whatever, and here comes Esther carrying a postcard that she had been sent six years ago with my wife's picture on it. She still held, she held on to it all that time, and she, I don't know if she knew that there was people at the, at the school, but she came running up to Deb and she says, sponsor, sponsor. That was really kind of tugged at my wife's heart. That was neat how those Haitian kids, they remember things like that and just simple things you know, you know, like that. She held, hung on to that postcard for all those years. Yeah, that's a nice picture of a finished bin. Uh, it's got a nice, strong metal door. Uh, these things right here are kind of what we call a ballast. There's three of those on each bin. They're filled with rock and then dirt, and that's to help hold the bin, give it stability, and also gives the Haitians a place they can raise some uh, vegetables or whatever in the top. They'll probably put dirt in there, and they can have a little garden in there. And that's a picture of all five bins. Okay, and a lot of times people ask me, well, what do the ladies do when they go to Haiti? What kind of work can they do? Well, the ladies were really, really busy. And one of the things they did, they, they put together hygiene kits to hand out. One other picture, this is kind of a picture of the, of the trail from the house where we were down to our work site. Look at how the Haitians carry their water. They filled those buckets three-fourths full, bounce it on their head and coming down this steep trail. You can see they're, they're not hanging on to it with their hands or whatever. That, that's how they carry stuff. It's really quite amazing. Again, a picture of the trail that we had to climb to get into the house. Most of us were usually kind of walking or half crawling up there while Mark decided to run up after the vehicle there. Okay, another interesting little thing on our trail down to our work site. This is a Haitian lumber mill. Look at these guys cutting these boards. They, they put a board or, or a log up here, up in the air, and they had this big long saw, one guy on top and on the bottom, and that's how they were cutting their logs. 
And they had a nice stack of boards there. They actually looked pretty good. But look at all the hard manual labor. Here's a picture of some of the ladies we bagged up beans and rice to give out to all the Haitians at the work site there. Uh, we told them they had to bring a container for oil, like they did, and then they, you know, they carry them off the beans on their on their head. And this was the school at Tiguave, and this was right next to where the bins went up. Typical classroom. You can see all the hard wooden benches, and they all wear nice uniforms. That, that's a typical schoolroom down there. Here's Marv handing out some uh, sports equipment that somebody from the church donated. And then we, the ladies handed out, sorted and handed out the school supplies. If you remember last fall, the school kind of, or the church collected school supplies. We had lots of colors and notebooks and and all sorts of things to hand out. They really appreciated that. And uh, Gladys and Veltizen made these nice school bags. She made them out of leftover uh, fabric samples, and uh, she put them together. And here's Devin Shirley's just kind of showing them. We gave one, we gave them to the school kids where they can put their school supplies in. They work really, really nice. Shirley was sorting out uh, some clothes and handing that out. And then one day we gave out the book of John in, in their Creole language, and that was kind of a big deal. Most of those Haitian people don't get books to read or whatever, so we handed them out a little book about that big and it, or the book of John in their own language, so they thought that was pretty special. And you can see how excited they are to get those books. Candy is always very popular. It's a good thing with a big, tall guy because they mob you. And you can see how they're just, you know, I, they, they're just stretching for anything they can get. Okay, sponsorship is another thing that a lot of people in this church are connected with. You can sponsor a child in Haiti for, I think, $35 a month. And uh, that helps provide a, a meal a day, some school supplies, and some medical care. And this is just a picture of Michael with his sponsored girl and then Marwin with his sponsor, sponsored boy. It's kind of neat when you go down there, you get to actually meet your sponsored kid. Okay, and during the midweek on Wednesday night, we had a church service there in Tiguav. Uh, my son David gave the message and then they interpreted for him. But you can see the building. Look at the roof. Look at this little rafter here. It's held up by a tree branch. That's kind of the roof and, the, and that's their church. And so again, sitting on, on wooden uh, benches, we sat there for a couple hours, and those Haitians were just excited to be there. It was really neat to see. And that is one of the maybe the future projects. They're going to look at maybe replacing that, that church, so that's something our church might be involved in in the future. Just a picture of some more of the Haitians afterwards. Michael seemed to be hit with some of the younger gals. I, I'm not sure why that was, but... And then our, chur our church uh, made some necklaces to hand out. And here, one of the, the gals has it around her neck. was a cross. I think they did that last summer in Sunday school, our church did. So we handed those out. Okay, and when we got back to the camp on Friday, we had time to replace a roof, the rubber roofing on, on a building at the compound, which is kind of nice. To, we had a little time to help, help uh, improve that compound, too. There's the rubber after that was done on that roof. And then uh, we handed out some more of those necklaces at another school. And then just a few pictures of the Haitian children. They're, they're so sweet and so cute. They just really tug at your heart when you see them. And just a couple of pictures of the area around our, camp, our compound. Again, pretty typical how Haitians cook outside on an open fire. And usually they eat beans and rice most every day. Kind of typical seeing how they carry their stuff around on their heads. This is an open market there. You can kind of see their stuff laying on the ground all over. Picture of a guy, that's sometimes how they, they transport their stuff on wooden two-wheel carts. And then again, open market, just things on the ground. And we did take uh, 
tour of a nice grocery store. That's one thing that's kind of interesting about Haiti. There are some nice things down there. It's not all poor. But we went to this nice grocery store. It's just like our, our high V or fairway here in town and uh, with one main difference. If armed guards with shotguns outside and in the parking lot all over, Mark uh, decided to have his picture taken with the guy. But. And then uh, finally we went to church there on Sunday before we came home. And that was just kind of the inside of the church building, their worship service on Sunday morning. Interesting, the ladies all wear these nice fancy dresses and hats and um, yeah, Haitians really dress up to go to church. They've heard one time they say they'll, they'll work four or five months so they have enough money to buy either a dress or a suit or whatever to go to church. It's kind of their culture down there. Okay, we want to thank everybody for all your prayers and your support. It was really a, it was, it was a wonderful trip. It just, it, it, everything went so well and every, everybody worked so good together and, and God granted us great safety and uh, the total project cost of the bins, there were 8000 apiece, so the, the church and the town ended up raising about $40,000 for this project, and that all came really relatively quickly, and it was just, it really was a, a great, great experience, and uh, yeah, it was a neat time, so. Uh, Jamie's going to come up now a little bit and tell a little bit about his experience and what he thought about Haiti. All right. In front of church. Amazing. We got... Uh, we had really fun. Uh, if you remember, like the first one picture we had from our team in October, <laughs> but uh, it was really uh, interesting. It was my first trip down there. Uh, always wanted to go, and uh, it was quite the experience. Uh, we worked with a lot of. It's first time working with a lot of these guys and with a dental team that went down there. Didn't really know a whole lot of them, but uh, we all worked together really well, and it went really good. Um, Jeff Freeman, if you ever get a chance to go anywhere, Jeff Freeman take that opportunity that's something you'll never forget uh, I could tell you stories about Jeff for an hour and uh, one quick one one just one at the end of the whole week we get worked all together and we we're doing little jokes to each other back and forth all week long and just laughing pretty much the whole week but uh, at the end of the week when we got all done we had one day where uh, we went to a beach or something and uh, just hanging out on the beach, and they got all these little vendors around, and uh, this guy comes up, hands me this bracelet. I was going to wear it today, but I forgot about it. Had my name and everything on it. I was like, how in the world did you know what my name was? You know, I'd never seen the guy before. And, of course, he doesn't speak English. He just points. And Jeff's sitting behind this couple trees back there on the beach just laughing, you know. And I was like, hey, thanks, Jeff. That's pretty nice, you know. Pretty thoughtful of you. And he goes, well, don't thank me. You still got to pay for it, you know. <laughs> so that was kind of the week it was with Jeff. So that was pretty good. But no, all in all, it was really good. Everybody worked really well. Um, we got up in the morning, had breakfast. We would leave. Uh, we worked on a school in Delmas. It's probably about what an hour drive or something, but it was through the city. So that was about a long trip. So we got to see a lot of the city of Port-au-Prince. Port-au-Prince is like three million people, so it's very crowded. There's a lot of a lot of traffic, a lot of foot traffic. The roads are, if you ever think driving around here is bad, try driving down there. It's really interesting. But uh, it was good. We had a good good work crew, got along well together. Uh, stepping out of your box, I think it's ironic that uh, last week we had that, that preacher come in and talk to us about that, stepping out of your box. This is something I've never done before, and it's really something how it... it uh, really gets to you when you step out and it's amazing what you get back in return um, so I just want to uh, encourage you you know if you don't do this type of stuff it's it's amazing how it, it can get to you uh, the one story that really I remember uh, every time we come back for supper about six o'clock or so and then uh, Bill Jr. would ask you know since we were out on the work site and the dental crew was there they did like 400 people the dentist crew did that week. So they had a big week, too, and then they would come back and they'd say, hey, anything happened on your trip or anything happened here at the dental office there at the dental clinic right by the mission? And uh, the one night they came back and all the dentist people just put their head down, you know, and they're like, oh, what happened, you know? And they're like, Julie, you got to tell this story. So Julie tells us this story. She helped. It was her first time down there, too, and she tells this story of this little girl that came in with all these school kids 
I mean, she was all, you could tell she was beat up in her face. Her teeth were all busted up pretty good. And uh, they're like, what happened to this girl? You know, what happened to this little girl? Why is she so beat up? What happened? You know, so it's pretty common. The families that break up there, either they lose a parent, a parent dies or something, they get remarried, divorced, whatever happens. But food is so scarce down there that the stepmother beat this little girl up because it's so hard to feed the whole family and it, it's kind of poor. They didn't have enough food and it's hard to give that food up that they earn or whatever little food they get to feed somebody else that isn't there. So this little girl was beat up by her stepmom and she was all beat up, her teeth were all busted up and a lot of pain because her nerves and her teeth. So it was just thankful that the dentist team happened to be there that week doing work on these kids. They fixed her up as much as you could, you know, they made her teeth really good. I mean, they were just doing dental cleaning, but they found whatever they needed to do, supplies there from them at the mission to, to fix this girl up. And this girl, you know, everybody was in tears and they were crying, obviously. And uh, this little girl was on the bus and Julie wanted to go give her one last hug. And she goes on this bus and this girl was just sitting in the back of the bus just crying. And, you know, she was, she wouldn't smile, you know, when she came in, she, they couldn't get her to talk, you know, because she felt so bad but she was on that bus and she seen Julie come on that bus and she come running from the back of the bus all the way to the front and gave Julie a big old hug she had a big smile on her face and uh, just that moment right there it makes that whole week worth it I mean that's why you go down there that's why you help these people out it's uh it's it's what it's all about is just helping those people that can't they can't do that for themselves so that's the story that sticks out in my head when I go down there it's all about them kids it's all about you know, they appreciate, I mean, we get everything we need right here. and They don't have any of that, and they're just happy kids. They smile. Um, it's like, you know, they don't know any different. You know, they don't miss anything because they don't have anything, and it just amazes me how that, how they live like that down there. But thank you for the opportunity. It was very well, very good time, and, uh, yeah, we'll go back again someday. Good morning. I'm, I'm going to start off with just uh, a great amount of appreciation. Um, first, I, I really appreciate Deb putting that one picture of me in front of the bin. That was, uh, she said, you know, I, we were kind of all working there, and she's like, oh, okay, it looked natural. And I thought, well, how do I look most when I'm at home? And so, of course, it seemed natural. But, no, I... I want to tell you how much I appreciate all of you out here because um, you're just so amazingly generous. I, I, I got to see multiple sides of this equation. I was, you know, privileged enough to be, to be a deacon during the time that we were, you know, taking this collection, and I, I find it amazing that, you know, Denny said this was 40000 bucks, and we got, you know, a lot of donations from the community, and many of you gave a lot. What, you know... It, what I think many of you don't know is, is we had lots of other money coming in during this time, and we were able to do other things besides this, too, which is amazing. We, uh, at the same time, we raised this $40,000. We gave another $40,000 to other things, which, which, for the size of this congregation looking out, is, is mind-blowing. So, you know, we, we, um, we built a well in Africa. Um, about a year ago, this congregation, many of you might not even know it, we, we gave fresh water to people who have never had it before. Um, we built these homes. We gave money to um, the Luke Society, I believe. It's out of Sioux Falls. They send doctors. They build hospitals all over the world. We gave $10,000 locally to our community. So this small congregation, you know, just um, $80,000 really short time just what a blessing you are Tr truly truly amazing um, so I, I had I, you know I've, I've been down to Haiti a couple times and 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 what a great privilege it is for me um, but I am not the type of person who you know you have you know David Tinclay who, who got a chance to preach who is a preacher and there are some of you out there who are who do such a great job of you know talking about Jesus talking about the Lord and 
you know, that's not, I guess, my personality. I, um, I'm actually a big fan of the, the current pope the, of the Catholic Church. He took the name St. Francis, and the reason he took that is he took the name from, from St. Francis of Assisi, who was a 13th century, 12th, 13th century prior of the church. Well, St. Francis um, grew up really wealthy, very, very, very wealthy. But he came to know the Lord, and he, he, he turned that all aside. And uh, he, he really lived a life of poverty and really had a heart for the poor. And that's why the current pope took that name, because he, I think, follows that, uh, you know, follows that lesson. And, and the reason I like St. Francis so much, and, and the St. Francis of Assisi, is he had a saying. He says, he, he came up with a saying that he said, always preach the gospel and use words only when necessary. So this was my chance, you know, you know putting these bins up is, um, you know, the ability to go down and, and just kind of do work for the Lord. But it's not necessarily a verbal thing, but it's still important. You know, we're down there trying to serve the Lord, show him our love, help the poor. Very important. You know, huge message of Jesus. If you look throughout the Gospels, key message of Jesus, you know, take care of the poor. That's what we're trying to do. Again, and, and, and I think it's great and, and a great lesson that we go down with all of these really awesome construction people, you know, Marv and, and Marwin and, and Greg Sawyer and, and I don't know who else. And, and here's me, this computer geek that they, you know, that they take along and I can do stuff. You know, I can screw screws together. I can do that type of stuff. So again, like Jamie said, I do encourage anyone who might have a thought of it, think about it hard, pray about it, and uh, it, it is a privilege to go and, and do this type of work. But thank you all. I do want to thank you, and uh, from the Neelys, I talked to them this week, they send their greetings, and thank you for their, your prayers and your financial support. And Pastor Bruce, don't go auctioning that off yet. You may need that this summer just for the sun, you know, up there, for it doesn't get in your eyes. We have a lot of fun when we go on these mission projects, but there's a lot of serious things, too, that go on. I can remember the first time I went, Gene and Hardog asked me to go along. I thought, well, I'm good for one thing. You know, we'll go do it, you know. Well, when it touched down the ground, I thought, what did I get myself into? Little did I know what the Lord had in store for me those last good number of years. And uh, I'll tell you, I've seen the Lord work in all these guys. It's fun to sit back once in a while on these, on these things and watch these guys go to work. It was, it was just absolutely unbelievable. <clears throat> and then the, another son of our church, Dr. Brian Den Hardog, taking this little gal that he did surgery on. You should have seen it. It was unbelievable what he did, how he straightened that little gal's leg. And she was all smiles at the camp the next day. And I don't, I think I was sat there and complained in the hospital bed, but she was all smiles. But it was a real blessing to go down there with these individuals and, and uh, work with them. A touchy moment for me always is the kids, the children. They hang on you and they pet on you. And I told the group during sharing one time, I said, I felt like a German shepherd when I left the end of the week. You know, they pet you and, and, uh, and stuff. They just love you so much. And it's fun handing out the clothes, some that didn't have any clothes at all. And they have clothes today. So, and shoes. So that, that's been a real blessing. I want to thank you again and uh, uh, hope to do another project in the future. Thank you. The text for our message today is John chapter 4, uh, reading just verse 35. Do you not say, four months more and then the harvest? I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Will you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, you are the great I am. And Heavenly Father, we are just so in awe of your presence this morning. Lord, um, as we continue in our worship service now, and you speak to us through your servant, Pastor Bruce, I just pray if there's anyone here this morning that may be hurting or doesn't know you, that they will feel your hand of mercy and come to know you. Lord, we just love you, and we ask this in your precious name. Amen. 
I also had the privilege last summer to go to Haiti, and I'll have to say that uh, going for the first time, and I think everyone else will say that it certainly is an eye-opening experience. The area where I went to is not the same as where uh, they were, but um, it's also a very primitive area. Uh, people have no electricity, no running water in their homes. Uh, many of the homes have uh, dirt floors. It was an eye-opening experience to see that level of poverty. I've been on other mission trips in the United States, but I had not seen anything like this before. So many of the things that we take for granted, uh, they don't have there. Jesus here speaks about an eye-opening experience. He says, I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Just consider the question, when? When did Jesus want the disciples to open their eyes? And the answer is, now. They were to look about them. They were to look beyond themselves to see the needs of of others. Jesus tells them that they shouldn't wait. They shouldn't procrastinate. They should see the opportunities that were given now. Jesus' words are relevant to us today. We also need to look beyond ourselves, to open our eyes now. The people that went to Haiti saw the needs of people there. They opened their eyes to that level of poverty, to people who needed homes, and they helped to supply those needs. We can all do that, wherever we are. We can open our eyes and our hearts and our resources to people in need. Why, then, did Jesus want them to open their eyes? And why did he want them to do it now? What's so urgent? Jesus said, because the harvest is ripe. He wants us also to have eyes for the harvest. He wants us to see that there are people who are lost, who are needy, who need what we can offer to them. He wants us to get out of our comfort zones to see that there is a spiritual harvest and we can be involved in that. He says in verse 36, even now the reaper draws his wages. Even now he harvests the crop for eternal life so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. There's a harvest in Haiti, but there's also a harvest right here in Sheldon. We have opportunities within our own community to reach out to people in need. There's a group of men from our church who every week collect cardboard that goes for the support of Love, Inc. And Love, Inc. is helping to meet people's needs. They're trying to give people not a handout, but a hand up so that their lives can be better. We also have the RISE Ministries here, which is working especially with young people, helping and mobilizing them to serve and to work. And some of our young people are involved in uh, their trips. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus said that mission begins at home. He said, when you receive the Holy Spirit, when it comes upon you, you will be witnesses first in Jerusalem and then Judea and then Samaria and then to the uttermost parts of the earth. We too begin right here with opportunities that we have here. Love Inc., Rise Ministries, at the Sportsman's Banquet coming soon. We are seeking to build God's kingdom one life at a time, whether it's here or it's in another place, including Haiti, there are opportunities for us to be involved. Who's involved? 
Jesus is telling us that it takes many people. It takes those who are sowers and also reapers. Both are vital, both are necessary, both are important. In the one week that the group spent in Haiti, they sowed some seeds, some seeds of kindness, some seeds of compassion, some seeds of love, some seeds that help people in need. We don't know all of the results of that. We never do when we sow seeds. We don't know the crop until it is finally harvested. And the ultimate harvest is yet coming in glory. But we are called now to be those who sow seeds. And we can ask ourselves, what seeds are we sowing? What are we doing for God's kingdom? What needs can we met? How can we invest our time, our abilities, our resources for him? The mission to Haiti was a great investment, not only of these people who went, but of those who gave to support them. And much was given, and many blessings have come and will continue to come. Jesus speaks in these verses about the wages. He says, even now the reaper draws his wages. He wasn't speaking just about receiving money, payment for a harvest. He was speaking about the payment of joy, the joy that comes out of service. He says, even now he harvests the crop for eternal life so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Those who went experienced joy. Joy in serving the Lord. Joy in being a blessing. We've been blessed to be a blessing. The joy of seeing needs met and of people coming to Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for those who were able to travel to Haiti. We thank you for all of the gifts that were given, all of the support that was made, for we know that this involved many, we, and all could be sowers together. We thank you for the harvest that is yet to come in your kingdom. Help us to look forward to that and to be sowers in the areas of life you call us to do. Help us to do your work, that we may build your kingdom one life at a time. So give us eyes to see that we may too be those involved in the spiritual harvest that you have prepared. We pray in Jesus' name. I'm told that uh, Blessed Assurance was one of the songs that the uh, Haiti group really uh, grew to appreciate while they were there. So that's what we're going to sing now. Please stand and sing with us. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. So oh. 
Blessed assurance is that we belong to him. So let us respond by praising him all the day long throughout our lives. Amen. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done. So Don't forget about the baked potatoes.